Hi, good morning guys. I'm Sam Goyle speaking to you from Singapore. Uh, the topic today that I'll be talking on is the TCK in Asia. So the concept of a third culture kid and what that means, particularly within the Asian context. Um, brief introduction, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm only Indian, I'm just from one nation, uh, but I have had the fortune and privilege to live and study and work all around the world. My journey took me from India to Singapore, which I consider home, uh, on to Sydney, on Australia, on to Spain, uh, on to the United Kingdom, on to New York City, uh, and all one big circle later back to Singapore, where I've been for about seven, eight years now. So, um, look, the TCK concept is quite, quite interesting to me. I've never really believed in labels or jargon. Um, I believe more in, in concepts and understanding them. And how I view the TCK phenomenon is more akin to a global citizen, a citizen of the world, right? Somebody whose passport doesn't necessarily dictate how they view and understand the world and how they interact with it, right? Um, in addition, you know, for me, why I, I quite relate to this topic is, well, I've seen it, I know it, you know, I have a weird accent. It's, it's a kind of hodgepodge from everywhere. When I'm, in, when I'm in the States, people say, why do you talk British? When I'm in, in the UK, people say, why do you talk with an American accent? But I think this is where, you know, I've, I've learned to just, just kind of accept who I am. Look, I've taken a bit of each culture that I've, in the countries I've lived in. I hope I've given back something or the other to those cultures I've interacted in. I'm an entrepreneur. I've been running a solar energy business. Uh, we put a bunch of panels on rooftops all around Singapore and eventually the, the Asian region. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I consider myself an eco-warrior of sorts. I've uh, never really been in the corporate field. I've, I've had the chance and opportunity to work with different startups all around the world, in the US, in Europe, and in Asia. And I think, you know, this is what brings me to the topic of today, which is Asian TCKs, right? Uh, what, is, what does that even mean? Why are they different? Are we just cooler because we're in Asia? It's not like that, right? Uh, I don't see any culture putting itself above or underneath any others. Uh, what I can talk about is, look, Asia is at an interesting time of its growth in history. Uh, I think that plays quite a part in how uh, we, the global citizens of Asia, um, relate and understand our place within the world around us, right? Um, you know, Asia has seen some pretty rapid modernization. Uh, I think I'll limit my discussion to Southeast Asia uh, because we do have pretty developed countries in some parts of Asia, like Japan, like Korea, who have been pretty developed for a really long time. Uh, but what's really interesting is within Southeast Asia, which is a region that I think is seeing a lot more consolidation and coming togetherness, uh, both as people, as countries, as economies, uh, I think there's quite a lot to be said in terms of the a distinction, I would say, of, of how I see TCKs or global citizens traversing the, the rivers of Southeast Asia, if you will. You know, it's very easy for us to access different countries with have very different cultures. A short one hour flight takes us to Indonesia, uh, in the other direction takes us to Thailand, uh, in the other direction takes us to Philippines. Uh, each of these have a distinct culture, a distinct language, uh, you know, to an untrained eye, Asians may look all the same as, as the kind of typical, typical stereotype, but actually in reality it's very different. Um, you know, different cultures, different religions, different cultural sensitivities uh, all play a part in how Southeast Asians interact with each other. And, you know, us types who are considered the kind of expats or, or the global citizens or those who belong nowhere and everywhere, uh, you know, it's quite an interesting, interesting canvas for us to, to paint our own pictures, right? Uh, living in a place like Singapore, which is very, well, it's quite unique, right? We, we sit at a cusp or in a, in a geographical location within a region that's the crossroads of many different cultures and historically always have been. Um, I think, you know, in a country like Singapore, where we have four official races, four official languages, um, you know, it's, it's quite well positioned to better understand cultural interaction and global thinking. Right. Um, I think how I differentiate um, the Asian TTK phenomenon, uh, or other than the, the, the American, for example, or the European, um, is that due to our geographical location, 
the interaction between the various cultures, the distinct cultures and countries that are all within a kind of you know, two hour flight within each other, uh, helps us realize and understand that, you know, look, no one culture is better than the other. You know, just because I'm Indian by, by birth doesn't mean that Indian culture is, is better than anyone else. And I think that for me is something very dangerous, right? Where, you know, we are so used to the culture that we're from and used to the way we do things and our traditions that sometimes we, we get this false sense of ego, really. Oh, that, oh, I know this better than them, or, you know, these guys do it this way. I, there is a lot of stereotyping these days, you know, no matter what people say that, yes, we're moving into a more politically correct arena and an area of people are racist. Uh, and it's not necessarily a bad thing if you, if you understand racism simply as a way to understand each other, you know. Uh, of course, I'm not talking about the extreme side of things, right? I'm make, meaning it more in a kind of cultural differences, right? And I think it is these very differences that make interactions fun. I mean, that make life meaningful. You know, if we all come from the same mentality, the same everything, like communist Russia, uh, there's only so much growth for to stimulate creativity, to stimulate good work, you know? And, and in fact, that's what brings me on to, to one of the questions in this, that, you know, are TCKs in Asia more akin or have a bigger calling to do good? Now, I feel this is an extremely sweeping statement and one that needs to be handled quite, quite carefully because I don't think that human beings in any one part of the world are hardwired uh, either culturally or traditionally or physically to do good and bad. Right? And also the word good, uh, is, it's quite a big word, you know, I mean... I, for one, you know, we, we have a zero cost solar model where we go and put panels on rooftops for free uh, for the clients who just pay us for power usage. So we're essentially raising money from investors to deploy solar in our cities without the, the rooftop owners having to fork out any cash. Now, for me, I believe this is doing quite a lot of good. Right? I'm, I'm helping save my environment. I'm helping uh, uh, champion a cause that I am passionate about. And I'm doing it in a way that people who, who put panels on their roofs don't have to come up with a single cent. So for me, I think that's doing good, but it may not necessarily be the same definition for a social entrepreneur or, or impact investor who are looking at, you know, how many villages can be light up with solar or how many jobs can we create for, for underprivileged or poorer people in different developing countries. So, you know, to break it down, I want to spend a bit of time on this topic. Well, first point, doing good. Um, what does that mean to us? You know, do we help someone cross the street? Do we feel that that's doing good? Um, is it because we are more exposed to poverty in Asia uh, because it's a more developing part of the world that we should be rightfully more akin to help? You know, I, I don't know. I think it's a, a double-edged sword, really. Um, I personally feel that, you know, doing good isn't something prevalent to TCKs. You don't have to be from 30 different countries or have lived all around the world to do good. Having said that, I think the, the Asian context is interesting because countries like India, my home country, we are confronted with poverty every day. Um, when I lived in New York, sure, you see a lot of homeless people, you know, sure, there's a lot of blue collar neighborhoods, but there's a difference from stark poverty, with people living on the streets and living in slums and things like that. And I think, again, that itself is a double edged sword. On one side, you know, every time I go back to India or I travel the region, I, I feel I feel moved. I feel inspired to 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 do something to to help. But at the same time, when I look around me and I look at you know people in India who've grown up with this their whole lives, sometimes tend to develop a bit of a thick skin. And I think that is something very very crucial. And where this global citizenry or, or this this ability to have seen different cultures and how different people interact with those cultures, I think it does provide a bit of an advantage, you know, it helps you put things in perspective, right? It, it helps us, even in Singapore, right? We live in a bit of a bubble in this very highly developed, super rich country uh, where everything is very well protected. It's very safe. It's, you know, the government has a very, I would say, active role. And it's a social democracy, right? But, you know, if you don't leave this bubble, if you don't see that just a short, 30 minute drive outside the country into the neighboring country you're suddenly kind of uh, uh what's the word you're, you're confronted with 
everything that's not as perfect and beautiful. The point I'm trying to drive at is, <clears throat> for me, it's all about building and establishing perspective. It's about reducing the ego. It's about <clears throat> understanding and recognizing that the world is a beautiful and diverse place and it is that interaction and distinct, the, the, the friction that creates creates life, you know. Um, so, I mean, I think that also helps understand the the different complexities of the global citizen phenomenon in a place like Asia, right? I mean, again, place like Asia. Asia is such a big place. It's so diverse, you know, China versus Japan versus Singapore versus Malaysia. I mean, it's very hard to generalize it and quite, quite dangerous to do so, I think. Um, so I would then look at, see, um, look, the multi-dimensions, again, like I said, to summarize, right, a lot of different countries in very close proximity with very distinct languages and cultures. Now, the same could be said about South America, but overarchingly, it's different dialects of Spanish, you know. Uh, here, you know, Thai is a vastly different language than Indonesian, which is completely different from Chinese, which is 360 degree difference from Japanese if you throw an untrained eye. Chinese, Japanese, Korean script may look similar, but to someone who spent a bit of time in Asia, realizes, well, it's like English and French and German, you know, uh, very different languages. And I think in Europe could be could be a good parallel to draw, right? German culture is very different from French, very different from Spanish. And I think, you know, having lived in Spain for a couple of years, I did see the phenomenon of, you know, so-called TCKs in Spain, perhaps half Moroccan, half Spanish, uh, perhaps you know, uh, half Spanish, half American, right? Uh, and, you know, for me, uh, who I picked up Spanish when I was living there and, and I used to have dreadlocks and it looked very different in my younger days. Uh, a lot of times people would mistake me for Caribbean or Spanish or even Moroccan. And, you know, because you have the brown skin, you can talk in Spanish, Spanish. Uh, you would kind of get away with it. And I used to, you know, I'd, I'd let people guess where I'm from. And, you know, even though nowadays I look pretty Indian, it's pretty clear. Uh, I think in the different countries and places I've lived in, I've certainly taken a bit of each culture and hope given back something to it, you know, uh, being able to bring a bit of the Indian culture as well in terms of the music and Bollywood and the food. And, you know, I remember when the first Indian restaurant opened in Madrid uh, and I was staying with a homestay and then took the family over there. And, you know, for me, I couldn't imagine somebody not having had an Indian meal. But, but in Spain of the late 90s, uh, it was very feasible. It actually was quite quite a big deal to have an Indian meal. So, I mean, it's these kind of stories that, that you know, fast forwarding now today and in my past decade or so in Asia. Um, look, it's a similar concept. We don't have Ethiopian restaurants here. You know, my wife is half Taiwanese, half Ethiopian. I'm Indian. My kids are going to be United Colors of Benetton walk-in. Uh, so I can also say that, look, the grass is always the green on the other side, right? It's just two sides of the coin. I don't think that because I'm a TCK in Asia and particularly special or more multidimensional, I think we have different dimensions. You know, if I was a TCK in America, uh, you know, coming from, you know, let's say if I was half black, half white, uh, I would be very American, right? It wouldn't be necessarily the same as being half Indian, half Chinese in Singapore. Um, so what I guess what I'm trying to say is that Every culture is different. Every part of the world is different. I think the common traits of global citizens are not so much of what the color of their skin looks like or how many different nationalities their parents are from. It's about how they understand the world, how they recognize the differences between cultures being a driver of, of growth, uh, of, of meaning, you know. And I think who can be open to different cultures, who can engage with different cultures, who can who can really feel that it's something, you know, distinct, something very real and tangible and something that they can learn from and, and grow with, you know, the cultural interaction. Uh, and I think to summarize, I just want to share maybe two or three last thoughts. First one, look, we're all different. Uh, nobody's better than anybody else. I'm not special because I've had the privilege to live in 10 different countries. Uh, somebody who's never left their town isn't any less global citizen than me if, if they choose to be so. You know, we have the internet, we have the digital age. I think it comes from a place of curiosity, of, of understanding, of acceptance. Uh, certainly having lived around the world helps a lot. I won't deny it. You know, it really helps with the, the perspective one has. It helps with the lens we, we can take on. 
but I, I want to conclude and say, guys, that look, our world is changing. You know, all different cultures are converging. You know, uh, the fact, and I'm testament to it, right? The fact that my kids one day will be half Indian, a quarter Ethiopian, a quarter Chinese, growing up in an international environment, uh, tells me that that the world is you know, in the next 50 or 100 years, it's going to change quite drastically in terms of our ethnicity, in terms of the anthropologically uh, interactions that we have as people. And I, for one, I'm really excited. I uh, certainly hope that, that I'm leading leading the charge, you know. Uh, and I believe that, you know, people just got to be open to different cultures. Please don't have an ego. Please don't think that your culture is better than somebody else's. We all have our strengths. You know, stereotyping, stereotyping is not necessarily a bad thing. I, I can I can live with a stereotype. It just washes off my back. Uh, we got to have a bit of humor in it. You know, we can't take ourselves so damn serious all the time. And I think, think to kind of summarize this big overarching topic of TTKs in Asia, um, look, there certainly are a lot. You know, uh, historically, Asia has always been colonized. <clears throat> a lot of the, the remnants of those colonies we see today in places like Hong Kong, for example, but I feel that, you know, it is a wonderful place to be able to interact with different cultures. I, you know, firmly recommend to anybody seeking to, to learn a bit more about cultures to, to take an Asia trip, you know, plan a trip, go through Southeast Asia, go through Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand. Even today, having lived here almost 10 years, I'm still seeing how different cultures are quite different here. Uh, and it's just, it's really exciting. It's fun. Uh, and I would urge all of you uh, to to learn a bit more about this part of the world if you haven't already. So thank you all for listening. Uh, again, nobody special. Uh, it's it's just that we we are all special. We're all different, and we should recognize those differences and build on those and then make the best out of it. Thank you very much, guys. Take care. <laughs>